I just finished Lies of P New Game Plus Plus, and I'm really blown away by how good this game is. Normally, I don't care for New Game Plus, but I found the combat in Lies of P to be so good that I wanted to continue playing through it until I hit Platinum. Throughout my playtime, it became crystal clear to me that this game was made by fans of both the FromSoft series and the Souls-like genre in general, as the level of detail throughout the entirety of the game was second only to FromSoft themselves. In fact, it seems like NeoWiz did some extensive analysis in quality of life areas where Souls-like games could be improved upon, and absolutely nailed it with their new additions. As such, let's quickly review some of the improvements Liza P made to the Souls-like formula, and why I hope other developers take notice. Number 1. No level requirements for weapons. This is a pretty huge departure from other games and something that I haven't seen many people discuss, and that's the fact that every single weapon in the game can be used by the player at any time, regardless of any skill point investment in motivity, strength, or technique, dexterity. Instead, attribute scaling impacts the handle of the blade, which can interchangeably be swapped against any other blades for standard weapons. So if you like a weapon and you'd like it to do more damage, you simply invest in whichever attributes that weapon supports. But any previous investment in attribute points does not prevent you from using it. This is really massive improvement as it heavily promotes weapon experimentation, and I hope more developers ditch level requirements for weapons going forward. 2. Regenerating Estus The second biggest change from the Souls formula in Liza P is that Pulse Cells, or the Estus Flask of this game, recharge once you've used the final one available. Initially, they recharge based on attacks you manage to get on enemies, but later on there are perks you can unlock that let it recharge automatically over time. This means if you've run out of heals, you can still push forward a bit further with exploration, and are more likely to make it to that next stargazing bonfire than otherwise. In general, it's a boon towards both exploration and boss fights, and an extremely welcome one at that. 3. Enemy weapons can break. In an interesting balancing choice, both you as a player and every enemy you encounter has a durability stat tied to their weapon. This is interesting because given enough damage or perfect parries to an enemy opponent and you'll break their weapon, resulting in far less damage output against you. This furthers the desire to master the perfect parry, given you can effectively nerf weapons from both generic enemies and bosses alike. Number 4. Heavy Attacks Have Purpose in most Souls-like games, you have fast and heavy attacks, but there's not a ton of incentive to alternate between the two given speed is generally more favorable in combat than not. The smart thing Liza P does about this is how they incorporated their own take on the guard break system from Sekiro, where after receiving enough damage, or deflections, the enemy's HP bar will glow white, meaning they're open to a heavy attack that will lead them to stagger, and can then be followed up with a fatal blow, dealing massive damage. It's a very clever way to have the player constantly varying which attacks to use and when, making combat much more dynamic, as it becomes a DPS rush to do as much damage as possible to trigger that fatal blow. Number 5. The Shield of Cheese is. The Legion Arm is another great addition to combat, adding even more variety to attacks given you can use it to spread fire or acid or other elemental damage. And while shields themselves are nothing new to the Souls genre, the Aegis Shield is just such an unbelievable utility if you're struggling with the perfect parry timing, given you can use it to both negate incoming damage and perfect parry simultaneously. While holding up the shield, you can spam the block button and essentially perfect parry everything thrown your way. It's a great feature for people struggling with that extremely narrow parry window, and is another example of NeoWiz providing players the tools necessary to play the game however they want. Difficulty be damned. Lastly, New Game Plus Incentive. I found my first playthrough of Liza P to be the most challenging, and then breezed through New Game Plus and Plus Plus in a fraction of the time it took initially. The game also gives you some incentive to do this, as more P working levels unlock in New Game Plus to make Pinocchio ridiculously overpowered. That's not to say that you won't be challenged in New Game Plus though, as in subsequent playthroughs you become a glass cannon that can die in two hits from any enemy, even if you've invested over 60 points in vitality. Closing Thoughts for additional mentions, I'd like to note that both the level design and overall performance of Liza P is really impressive. 90% of the game is a series of interconnected areas, with Ouroboros-style shortcuts unlocking new sections while inevitably looping back on primary points. And throughout a huge variety of areas, performance never takes a hit. I think it goes to show how great Neo are as developers working with the Unreal Engine, 
given that AAA companies with hundreds of people working on the same engine struggle to make their games run at all, while Liza P never drops a frame. Overall, this is just an amazing game, made by a team of extremely talented people who clearly love the genre. I will absolutely keep an eye out for anything else the studio puts out, as I don't think I've ever been so engrossed with a Souls-like game that hasn't been made by FromSoft. As for what I'll be streaming next, this weekend I'll be starting the new Lords of the Fallen game, and I'm extremely interested to see how well the combat in that one holds up to Lies of P. So swing by if you want to hang out while I'm playing through that one, and let me know what you thought of the changes Lies of P brought to the Souls-like genre down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and to my members for their continued support, and I'll see you next in Lords of the Fallen. Take it easy!